we're back from our holiday break with part three of our exploration of script analysis for actors. This time we'll talk about wins and losses and the importance of competition in our work right after this. Hi, the Inspired Actor here. If you're new to this channel, we are dedicated to helping actors become better artists by offering these quick, roughly 10-minute acting lessons. We try to post these at least every week or so, so if you want to see more videos like these, go ahead and subscribe so you'll be notified as soon as they come out. Also, take a moment before you forget and hit that like button as it really helps me out. And if you know people who might like these videos, please don't hesitate to share them on your social media outlet of choice. Strong preparation makes the action effortless. Michael Chekhov. Imagine that you are a painter and you have agreed to paint a portrait. The subject of that portrait knocks on your door. You welcome them in. You sit them down in the normal spot for your subjects and start to get to work. Now imagine that you have decided to forego all prior preparation to paint that day because you felt it would interfere with the true artistic process of creating something in the moment. You didn't consider any of the supplies you might need beforehand, so your subject must wait while you run to the store, buy the canvas, the brushes, the paints, and other supplies that you realized you needed only after the sitting had begun. You begin to paint, but realize halfway through that the subject is not framed in quite the way you wanted, so you have to start all over again. Soon the session is over, and you have barely begun. Let's also pretend, for example, that the subject won't be able to sit for you again for a long time, and that you had agreed beforehand to finish the painting in a few months. Now, thanks to your poor preparation, it may take years for you to complete if ever. Had you simply spent some time to prepare the work, gave some consideration about how you wanted to paint your subject, the size of the canvas, the colors you might need, prepared the brushes by making sure that they were clean and ready to go, deliberated over the overall picture you wanted to convey with your painting, it all might have been a much easier and more fulfilling process for everyone involved. Sure, there are romantic stories about artists who relied only on inspiration, who would take years and years to finish a portrait, and their art is now hanging in museums and are regarded as the highest artistic ideal. It should also be noted that many of those artists, while geniuses, died in poverty. And for every artist that has their work hanging in museums, there are maybe hundreds, thousands, who worked in the same way who will forever be relegated to obscurity. I paint pun intended, this rather bleak picture to drive home a point. Few actors have the privilege of choosing their own deadlines. Opening night is when it is, and ready or not, the actor must be ready to give a truthful performance right when the camera rolls or the curtain rises. This is why it is essential that the actor do as much preparation outside of rehearsal as they can. Few film directors are going to give you much beyond where your mark is, your point of focus, and other technical details of the shoot. Few professional theaters can afford to give you more than three or four weeks of rehearsal, even for a very long or complex play. It is not fair to anyone, especially yourself as an artist, to think that your homework begins and ends at simply memorizing your lines and being on time for rehearsals. You owe it to yourself to do more, to be prepared and be an absolute expert about your character and their place in the story as a whole. That is the purpose of scoring your script, to make the action of playing your part as effortless as possible. Now, in the previous videos in the series, I have talked about the following questions that you should be able to answer. 1. What is my super objective for the entirety of the play, film, scene, or monologue? 2. What are the objectives that compose my through line of action for my character? 3. Where are the individual beats of the entirety of the piece I am working on? 4. What is the title or name of each beat or unit I have identified? 5. Where is the beginning, middle, and end for my character? 6. What is the polarity of my character's journey throughout the piece? 7. How does my character transform from beginning to end? 
If you would like to see those videos, I'll put a card up here so that you can watch them, and I highly recommend that you do at some point. Now, the next question that you should think about and mark in your script is, who wins at the end of each beat or unit? To quote another Michael that I happen to like, Michael Shirtliff from his book Audition, there are two points of view an actor should imbue in every scene. One, I am right and you are wrong. Two, you should change from being the way you are to being what I think you should be. You'll notice that these aren't wishy-washy little desires that have no stakes attached. They are essential points of view that your character must have in order to be compelling enough for us to want to invest our attention in them. Game playing and competition is essential to exciting drama. Actors play characters who not only care about what they want, but are driven to succeed at attaining their goals with the highest stakes possible. If they don't really care about what they want, then what is the point of us, the audience, investing in their struggle, or lack thereof, for two hours? Every situation our character is in is just a game with different rules. And if the stakes aren't high enough, if winning isn't important enough for the characters we are playing, then we can fall into the trap of dull, uninteresting acting. And that is an unforgivable sin in our work. By the way, I do have a video about raising the stakes, so click on the card up here if you want to give that a watch. Many people confuse being nice for not being competitive, especially actors. They make choices like, I want to help them, or I want to teach them. I encourage you not to make such choices as they are, put simply, very boring. As I've said in previous videos, an objective without a strong relationship of want and need is not very useful. And there are very few instances when you will be playing characters with motivations that aren't selfish in some way. Your character almost always wants something from someone else in order to attain a lifetime's dream for their own future. Not in a little while or 10 years from now, but right now, right away, here, in front of everyone else. In life, we absolutely can make altruistic choices. We donate money to help the needy, we help old ladies cross the street, we make sacrifices in one way or another to help others without expectation of getting anything in return. Sadly, and also thankfully, no one is writing movies or plays about that. Sure, there are plays and movies about great men and women who helped others, but they also include loads of conflict to throw in the protagonist's way, giving them something to fight for and against. They want and need to win. So helping an old lady across the street while noble and good in and of itself is not dramatically interesting without conflict keeping you from getting her from one curb to the other, and a sense of competition in your character driving them to attain that goal right now. Acting is not nice. You have to want to win and hate to lose. Story structure makes this non-negotiable. And because we are always playing characters within a story, we are always subject to the rules of story structure. Stories rely on conflict in order to make them compelling. Without conflict, there is no drama. And without drama, there is no story. Think about the last time you played a game with someone else. Hopefully, everyone playing wanted to win and played as hard as they could. That's what makes it fun. Have you ever played a game with someone who didn't care whether they won or lost? It was probably pretty lame. Your character really needs to want to win. They need to find love defeat their enemies, become the champion. They also need to win each and every objective along the way, even if they end up losing. There can be many smaller victories or defeats, wins and losses along the character's journey, and each and every one of them need to be marked and registered. In other words, if you're going to play a game that means anything, you need to keep score. The losses are there to drive your character to succeed the next time. The wins are there to be celebrated, not only by your character, but by the audience as well. Whether you win or lose, 
It needs to count. The higher the stakes, the better for you as an actor and for us as the audience. So when you're scoring your script, be sure to mark whether you win or lose at the end of every beat or unit. By that, I mean whether you succeed at obtaining your objective or not. Let that win or loss drive you to the next beat or unit. And again, register each win and communicate every loss all the way to the end. And that's all the time we have for this week. Next time, we'll continue our exploration into scoring with another question or two to explore. So if you want to be the first to be notified when that video comes out, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. See you all later.